Professor West Porter. We're talking about the Federal Rules of Evidence. We're talking about relevance under 401. And you look, uh, these are the slides. These are sort of the Mad Lib slides of the arguments under the test for relevance under 401 for each side, for the opponent side, the things you must say using the operative word, and from the proponent side, the things you must say using the operative words. So what I wanted to do in this video is give you a short preview of what an evidentiary argument looks like through this. So imagine a dispute. I'll be in the dispute. I'll be the defendant. And imagine I have um, a, a dispute over a piece of land where the plaintiff says and then sues me because they say that I owe them a few hundred thousand dollars in this land deal and that it's significant and that they I wouldn't give it back and therefore they're suing me uh, at trial um, I want to put on evidence that essentially this person has a ton of money and that they lost track of uh, this amount of money that they're saying I owe them it's an accounting error on their side it's oversight on their side uh, it's like losing five bucks for you and me is hundreds of thousand dollars for this person. So I have the plaintiff over here, this crazy rich guy plaintiff who sues Professor Porter defendant over these hundred thousand dollars in this land deal. And at trial and, and pre-trial, I reveal that I'm going to put on evidence of his wealth. I'm going to put on evidence of um, pictures of his house, pictures of his many cars, pictures of the speedboat. Uh, and and I want to do that at trial. So I'm going to have witnesses that do that. I'm going to have photographs that do that. I'm going to have testimony that does that. So I'm going to be the one through my attorney presenting and putting on this evidence of uh, his crazy rich wealth um, uh, throughout the course of trial. And of course, his attorney throughout trial is going to be ready and poised to object and stand in opposition to that evidence if they don't file a motion in limine ahead of time. So when it gets to the right point of trial where my attorney's asking questions and we're putting up, we're about to put on evidence of wealth and we're asking questions in the direction of wealth and we're getting ready to put the photos on of his house and cars and, and other evidence of his wealth, there's an objection. His attorney stands up and says, objection irrelevant. And the dance begins. We make our way to sidebar so we can have an evidentiary discussion outside of the ears of the jury. And over at sidebar, the judge turns to me, turns to my side, turns to my attorney and says, the objection is relevant. What say you? And you look at this yellow sheet and we would essentially go down this Mad Lib. You're under this evidence, this evidence of wealth and the photographs of the cars and the house is relevant because it has some tendency, I'm going to use those operative words, to make a fact more probable than it would be without this evidence. And that fact is that this is oversight and this is an error on his part, part uh, which is a key defense in this case. And that's something that's of consequence in this case because it is our theory of the case and it does matter. So therefore, we're putting out evidence of wealth to show that this hundreds of thousands of dollars that he sued us over, it's really just an oversight. It's really just a mistake. It's like you and me losing $5. Therefore, Your Honor, you should overrule the irrelevance objection and you should allow this evidence and you should allow my attorney to ask the questions and you should admit the uh, exhibits and photographs that display his wealth like the house and cars and things. It would then, the judge would then say, turn to the opponent's counsel, the crazy rich uh, counsel and say, what say you as the opponent? You said relevance, you heard his argument, what say you? Your Honor, this evidence is not relevant because it has absolutely no tendency to make any fact of consequence uh, more or less probable than it would be without this evidence in this case. Uh, they're simply trying to show, remember a lot of these evidentiary arguments come down to what is the proponent trying to do? Their, their person would say, their attorney would say, what he's really trying to do here is just put on all this wealth and make the jury think, oh, he's got plenty of money. He doesn't need this, this, this uh, extra money that he's suing in this lawsuit. Therefore, sustain the objection, exclude this evidence. Let's just talk about what was right and wrong in this land deal and whether Porter owes the crazy rich guy money. And you can apply that to any relevance discussion, any evidentiary discussion. Use these two Mad Libs, understand who's the proponent, understand who's the opponent, and make an argument and practice it yourself and practice writing it down.